What's up guys, this is going to be a video on CP and what CP caches you should generally be looking for using like OLCP, COL recognition knowledge. Um, so I've got three on the left that are mainly important for two-handed solving and then an additional optional two on the right that can be very useful for one-handed solving if you use a lot of 2GLL, like ZBLL cases, as well as uh, I believe it's called EOCPLL. It's basically just a way of orienting edges and like forcing two GLL cases easily. But we won't talk about those first. Let's get into the three important ones for two-handed solving. The first main one that I think is important is knowing which CP corresponds to your OLL algorithm solving CP. So in this case, these match. These are opposite. My standard OLL alg gives me a CP skip. Focus camera. Please. <laughs> So this is one of the, what I would call, noteworthy CP cases, and this is something you should be aware of for every OLL. I'm just using this P-shape as an example. The other one, the next one you should be aware of is the case where it'll correspond to a diag swap of corners. So in this case, when these match and these are opposites, the standard OLL algorithm will give you a Y-perm, or a V-perm, or an N-perm, or an E-perm. Now, for these cases, it can be worthwhile to learn an alternative OLL CP. That is, of course, given the condition that you can do the OLLCP as fast, or like, you know, within point one of your standard OLL algorithm, so maybe something like that. Similar to, oops, which is a rel God damn it. it's a relatively similar speed to doing that. So that's a, that's a decent example of a pretty worthwhile OLLCP, or at least more worthwhile than like some other ones. So that's the second CP case you should definitely be aware of and you should know that. Know what corresponds to Diag for every OLL. And the last one, and this is a roll specific one, generally speaking I'm not super big on roll anymore. If you've watched my uh, Roll and Joel example solve video you'll know why that is. It's basically just like the conclusion of the video explaining what I, what I think about roll at the moment. Um, but the one roll case you should know is the CP that corresponds to headlights being on left, and in this case, when these match, and these are opposite, the standard OLL algorithm will give you your headlights on left. The reason this is good is because no matter what PLL algorithm set you're using, assuming you're a right-hand dominant solver, about half of your PLL algorithms that have an adjacent swap of corners, the headlights are going to be on the left. Now, that doesn't mean I think you should learn full roll. This is basically just learning like the one roll light case for add swap which again I talk about in that video and other videos on my channel. Um, but yeah, this is the CP case you should definitely learn. Um, I will say that with this CP case, if you understand like how CP cases are related to each other, you will in turn very easily pick up that, you know, this one with these matching and these opposite, you'll be able to figure out pretty quickly for a lot of OLL cases that this corresponds to headlights being on the right. And in this case it does. But that's not really an important one. I wouldn't encourage you to like actively learn those per se, although you will naturally pick them up. But these ones where you know the headlights are going to end up on the left, these are absolutely worth learning. Because you either know you're probably going to flow into PLL or you at least know where your headlights are. And in this case you'll be able to flow into PLL. So those are the three main cases and I guess now I'll show you some... Uh, I'll just show you an example of like another OLL case and see if... Um, I'll see if something comes up where it's like something that is, you know, the the case for one is also the case for... Well, I guess, I guess for these it wouldn't be, but when you get these involved, they would be. Anyways, more cases. So let's take this OLL here. These matching, these matching corresponds to solved CP. These matching and then these opposites correspond to diag. And then here, these matching, these matching corresponds to headlights on left. So you should get the idea with that. Like that's the three main CP cases you should be look up on the lookout for and the ones you should know for every single OLL as a two-handed solver. Additionally, if you are into one-handed solving and are fancy and know a decent amount of two GLL, then these two CP cases are also quite useful. So the first one is called no swap and that's when the corners are permuted. So in this case, it's when these match and these match, but really you can see like this is twisted in place, this is twisted in place. You wouldn't recognize it like that, but you would basically just know, okay, this CP, it, you know, it means that there's no swap of corners happening on the cube. 
And the reason that's important is because you can use something like a fat anti soon to force a ZBLL, or specifically a 2GLL. You could either do that, or you could do back soon from there. Do back anti soon from here. There's all sorts of options that you could be doing. But that's the first one. And then the second one you should be aware of as an OH solver if you're using those fancy algorithms is diag swap. So these matching, these matching. And for these ones you would use like six movers to um, force two GLL. So either like that or like that. So these three, definitely learn them for two end solving. And then those ones, they're also particularly good for one end solving. I'll show another example with like a line type case. Let me just think of one. Um, okay, uh, wait, wait. And I'll do that on this cube. Actually, I could just do... There we go. Camera, camera, focus, focus, focus. There we go. Okay, so similar for the line. Again, this is another no swap. It's the same. It's the same corner case, but for one-handed, you would want to do something to force like a ZBLL. You would want to do something like that to get a, a two GLL case. Uh, I think this doesn't really work here. That forces a soon. So you would want to do that specifically from the back for that case. And then similarly here, because this is diag CP, not solved CP you'd want to do a through rough variant to get a 2GLL. That's all I got for this video. These are just the, uh, these are, in my opinion, the most noteworthy CP cases as both a two-handed solver and a one-handed solver. If you're a one-handed solver, I would recommend learning both, but if you're primarily just into two-handed and you don't want to apply ZBLLs to two-handed, which can be useful, but if you're not about that, then it's really just those three that you need to learn. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.